Hello everyone! In this Python and OpenCV tutorial we explain number one how to open a video from a video file in OpenCV and Python, number two how to obtain video properties such as total number of frames, frame rate, video width and video height in Python and OpenCV and number three how to play the opened video in OpenCV and Python. This is the video that we opened from a file. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 450 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start with explanations and with coding. The first step is to import the OpenCV library. We import this library like this. Next, I will import the time library. I will use the time library to delay my code such that the video that I will play can be played with the proper frame rate. I will explain this later on in this video tutorial. Next, we will open the video file and we will create the video capture object that is used to access the video and display its properties. Consequently, I will type this cv2. Video capture, that's the name of the function. And over here, as an input to this function, we need to specify the name of the video file. I will open this file recorded video.avi. Notice over here that I'm not specifying the path to my video. Here is the reason. Over here, we can see that my current folder is codes OpenCV. And the file that I will open is actually in that folder, so I don't need to specify the path. Here is the file. The function video capture will return a video capture object. I will call this object as video. Now, it's always a good practice to test if this procedure actually succeeded or not. To do that, we will write this if statement. If video dot is opened this function is opened will return true if we actually were able to open the video then if that's the case we will simply print the message the video is open if we are not able to open the video we need to handle that case so we'll print a message. Could not open the video. Okay, so let's run this code and let's see what happens. Perfect, the video is opened. To close the video, we need to type this. Video.release. Okay, so let's execute this. And let's see. Okay, perfect. Next, let's learn how to get the main video properties such as the total frame count, frame rate, frame width, and the frame height. We do it like this. To get the total frame number, we use this flag cv2.cap prop frame count, and we use this function get. Notice that we are basically using our video capture object and the function get is one of the member functions of that class. Okay, this will give us the total frame count. To get the frame rate, we will use this flag and the same function. And to get the frame width and the frame height, we will use these two flags. Okay, so let's execute this code and let's see the outputs. The total frame count, in our case, is 1649. The frame rate is 30, the frame width is 640, and the frame height is 480. Next, let's learn how to play the video. To play the video, we actually need to define a while loop. In this while loop, we will play the video frame by frame. Let's read a single frame. To read a single frame, we will use the function read. This 
function returns two outputs. The first output is a variable, or better to say, Boolean variable that indicates the success of the read process. So if you are able to correctly read the frame, the success will become true, otherwise it will become false. The second output is our actual frame. The frame is actually a NumPy array defining the image. Now, let's write a simple if block that will stop the video execution after we encounter the last frame, that is, after the last frame. After the last frame, success will become false. If not success, then print reach the end of the video. The end of the video. Perfect. And we will break the while loop. Okay. Next, to display the video frame by frame, we use this function cv2.im show. Then, let's give the name to our display window, let's call it video, and the second input is our frame, that is the image that we want to display, here it is. Next, we will introduce this if block that will stop the execution of the code, that is, it will stop the video if the user presses the C key on the keyboard. Okay. So that's our while loop, and after this while loop, we need to add an additional function. So after video release, we will add a call to this function, cv2.destroy all windows. Make sure that you spell this correctly, destroy all windows. Okay, now we are ready to play our video. Here it is. Uh -huh. You can see our video. However, there is one issue with this video. It's too quick, right? So the frame rate is probably even 100 frames per second. So how to fix this problem? To fix this problem, we need to introduce a small delay over here. That is, we need to pause our code execution for a certain amount of time. So how do we calculate the amount of time for which we need to pause our code? Well, if you remember over here, I read the frame rate of this video. So here's the frame rate. The frame rate is 30. 30 means that we have 30 frames per second. That's our video. And the video is recorded in real time. I did it before this video tutorial. This means that we need to delay the code for 1 over frame rate. Uh -huh. So we need to delay the code for this amount of seconds. So let's do that. To delay the code, we call this function time.sleep and we specify the amount of time for which our code will be delayed in seconds. It's 1 over frame rate. Okay, let's now play this video. And now the video is much slower, actually, it's displayed with the proper frame rate. Okay, looks perfect. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.